Hello, this is a video lesson about our call to action section of our research project. Now, this is a PowerPoint presentation that is also available to you in Blackboard. Our call to action is the final portion, well, the second final portion of the uh, research project. You will need a works cited page, but I do want to set up by showing a little bit of a background. By now, your readers have a really good understanding of your topic. They've read your overview, your review of literature, and your research argument. They might be wondering, now what? And uh, you've probably had this situation where you've read, oh, this thing is bad or this thing is good. And you say, well, so what? What does it mean to me? That is kind of the purpose of the call to action. It's not enough for your paper to say something is good or bad, a system needs to be changed or something needs to be fixed, a problem needs to be addressed or whatever. We need to make a recommendation. How are we going to do this? How are we going to fix the problem? How are we going to um, make a change? What is the best way to do this? What's efficient? What is the expert-led way of doing something? So that leads us to the purpose of the call to action. You're making a recommendation based on your conclusion from your research argument. Basically, you're giving your readers some next steps. Hey, if you agree, let's do these things. Or you might say that it's imperative that we do these things in order to save the world or whatever. Uh, it needs to allow for the application of your argument. If something's bad, how do we make it good? If something's not working, how do we correct it to make it work? Uh, what are the reasonable, actionable steps that people can take to do something? So it gives readers something to think about. Oh, maybe I should do something, right? Uh, it involves the readers and gives um, us basically a next step. It's leading to more discussion because nothing ever ends. We should know this by now. There's always new research, new advancements, new uh, recommendations, there's always counterpoints that we have to address, that we have to address the counter argument. And so those are things that we'll be doing. Our length, it's going to be substantial. I want you to get your point across. It's not going to be long, as long as the research argument. It'll be around a thousand words. I mean, here's where we're putting um, our argument to the test. You need to refer to your arguments from the previous section. You need to provide support by referring to the sources from your research argument, but you also should be introducing new sources. Things that uh, show what you're calling for are actually going to work. I want you to address the counter arguments that helps, uh, that go against your call. Say, you know, other people think this is not the right thing to do, or other people think that we can't really do anything. Here's where they are wrong. Then, uh, Finally, you don't need to be definitive. This is not the end-all, be-all. I want you to be able to recognize the challenges or limitations or the lack of resources or technology available. Uh, but maybe you know part, that's part of your call. Before we can do X, Y, and Z, we have to invent A, B, and C. Um, and that's part of your call. However, uh, you know it should be something reasonable and doable. You don't want to say, well, if scientists would just invent a gigantic ice cube, we could cool off the ocean, right? That's not reasonable, it's not feasible, it violates the laws of thermodynamics, right? Because how do we get an ice cube that big, right? Um, anyway, so we need to make sure that what we're doing is reasonable and doable. That is something that is within the near future, not, you know, build a time machine and go back and stop this. That's not a reasonable call to action. Um, what else does it do? It should help point the readers in a direction. It needs to inspire them by uh, to act by showing what can be done. But we're also wrapping up our project. We're giving the readers a sense of what is possible and challenge your readers to act or provide their own counterpoint. Do you agree or not? If you don't think this is right, hey, write your own darn paper. Uh, those sorts of things. And then our sample structure, uh, you got to refer back to the main point. Basically, uh, you might say something like, if we know that X is not a good thing. What is a reasonable change to fix it? And then you start showing what needs to be done. So draw on that conclusion. So yet first paragraph, you're referring back to your researched arguments conclusion and making your call. Here's what needs to be done. Then 
The rest of your paper or section can outline the necessary steps and changes or the actions needed to carry out the call, providing out uh, providing support by uh, referring to experts, examples from other places that have experience with this call or a similar call. Draw those inferences and say if it worked there, uh, it can work here. Or if it's this is something that's happened, we can do this. That's similar. Uh, you know, draw analogies. I want you to address the challenges and oppositions to this call and then counter the challenges and oppositions. It should be singular. Counter. I guess plural is fine. Addresses, counters, yes. So counter those challenges and oppositions. Then finally, restate your call and conclude by connecting the topic to the reader. So the readers should feel like they are being spoken to. We're not using the words you in here, but um, you know, this is where it's important for people to act. This is where citizens can do things. This is where people of whatever place, location, need to stand up and do what? We're not saying you directly, but we're saying who needs to be doing the acting. Or you can say everyone. And finally, that's it, right? Not really. We need a works cited page. That works cited page will probably be two pages long, uh, maybe even three, because it's a lot of stuff. And that's perfectly fine. You're going to feel a good sense of satisfaction when you see how many sources you've included um, and have been managing to work with. So that is the call to action section. If you have questions, please feel free to contact me.